you have one item listed online or if you have a thousand items listed online, you need an inventory system. And today I'm going to show you how we organize our 700 item inventory. Hey guys, it's Eileen. Thanks for coming back to my channel, Hustle and Slow. And today I'm going to show you our inventory system. So this is an inventory system that we've been using for probably two years now, give or take. Um, we've tweaked a couple things here and there, but this is pretty much what's working best for us and I wanted to share it with you so that hopefully it can help you create an inventory system or update your inventory system if you need that. It took me a while, but after really deciding to do this reselling thing, um, I really sat down and tried to figure out a good inventory system and it kind of evolved into what it is today and I'm going to show that to you right now. So, um, I guess the main thing that we use or the, the most, what we use the most is these inventory bags and because we sell mostly clothing, most items fit in these bags and I'll do a little screenshot right here of the, um, where I bought them on Amazon. And so these little bags, we just put the item in there. There's a label on it that has the item ID, which is what we assign that item. We reuse these bags. So um, this would be item R12. Right now we don't have an item R12, which is why I'm holding this bag. Um, so we put the item into this bag and then put it in bin R, which is what the R is for. And we have 25 items per bin, so there are 25 bags that go with bin R. Um, and that way we know when we sell something um, where to find it. So I'll show you exactly where I put that information in eBay, Poshmark, Mercari um, in a minute, but I'm just going to kind of go over the physical aspects of our inventory system first. So that's what we use. Um, I'll also give you a screenshot of some good labels to use for your inventory bags. This is actually just a, like a full sheet, like a full sh sticker sheet to, that I printed out and cut, which was a pain in the butt. I don't recommend it, but you can also just buy like label stickers, just make sure you don't buy the temporary ones, make sure you buy the permanent ones um, because otherwise they will come off and it's happened before. So I'll insert that screenshot right here so you can see which ones I've used in the past. And yeah, so you can use those. There's also, if you want pre-made labels, um, I couldn't find any that had a, a letter and a number, but if you just wanna do numbers, you could do bin like one through 25, 26 through 50. Um, you can grab pre-made stickers for that. They come in a roll of like, I think 500 and I'll show you the screenshot for that right here. And just so you know, anything I show you a screenshot of or anything I mentioned in this video, I will have linked down below so you can easily find it. People always ask me what kind of supplies I use. So I'd like to provide that for you guys to make it easy to find. So inventory bag, all clothes that fit in here will go in here. Any clothes that do not fit in here, go in a clothing rack in our garage. Our, we have a one car garage that we store all of our inventory in so we have a clothing rack in there um, and anything that doesn't fit in these bags just gets hung on that rack um, for clothing at least and then we also do shoes and we do hard goods and I will show you those right now so we might actually be moving away from this because I'm trying to reduce our plastic consumption but this is how we do do shoes um, depending on the shoe so um, my husband kind of does the inventory now so it's up to him how he does it but um, so we wrap the shoes up like this so they're pretty much ready to go. They're well protected. We can throw this in a poly if it's sneakers or a box if it's something nicer. Um, and then we have these stickers right here. This says SB1-10. So that means it's in shoe bin one and it's item 10. So we just make a new one for every pair of shoes, stick it on there and wrap them in this stretch wrap. You can find it at Home Depot or um, I think we bought ours on Amazon or eBay and I'll show you a screenshot of that right here. Um, and it works really well and it keeps everything really well protected. I know some people, this is not like the most glamorous thing, but it keeps the item well protected. But like I said, we're trying to reduce our plastic consumption, so I'm not sure what I'll be doing moving forward as soon as we're done with the stretch wrap. I'll have to figure that out. Um, so that's some shoes. And then larger shoes or shoes that we need to box, we do put in a shoe box. Um, we usually use these priority mail shoe boxes. They're free. If you just go to the USPS website, you can only use it for the USPS and only use it for, pri for priority mail. Um, but these are the shoe box size ones. And then we put SH139. So any item that's pre-boxed, 
that's a shoe is SH and then the number that corresponds with it and then usually we'll put the brand there too so it's easy to, easy to find. Um, so we do have quite a few of these stacked in our garage as well but not so great thing about this is that it takes up a lot more room storing all these boxes. So, All right and then for hard goods like if we're selling mugs or decor, why can't I think of any hard goods? Decor, mugs, um, I can't think of any hard goods right now but we try to pre-box most of them. Some of them get put in a just a bin in our garage and then um, we just note in eBay that it's in the hard goods bin, but most of the stuff we do like to pre-box, especially if it's something breakable or something that needs um, a good amount of packing so that we can weigh it and we know exactly how much it weighs and the buyer pays the right amount of shipping and we don't lose money on shipping. We have not lost money on shipping in quite a while because we've made sure that we calculate everything properly. So then we just put these stickers or labels on here um, and we just put HG and then the number and that's how that works. So uh, we just make a new sticker every time we get a new hard good item and store it in our garage. So that's how we physically store everything. Um, and then let me pop in a clip right here of a really, really quick overview of our one car garage where we have all of our inventory stored. All right, so this is our garage and this is like our hard goods shelf, hence all the weird shaped boxes. We do reuse boxes because we love the environment and we use re we reuse clean boxes. Over here, you'll see all of our shelves with our bins. You'll see the letters on each of the bins. Sorry, this footage is so blurry, but you'll, at the end, you'll also see the clothing rack where we hang stuff that doesn't fit in those plastic bags. That's pretty much it. All right, so that was a quick look at our one car garage that we use. You'll see that I kind of only showed you one side because the other side is boxes that we're reusing um, or that need to break down and be reused, um, unlisted inventory, just stuff that is not listed. But I just wanted to show you the organized side because the other side is kind of irrelevant and needs to be cleaned out right now. So at some point we will clean all that out, sort it, and then um, add more, more shelving on that side. Well, there is shelving on that side, but add more bins on that side for more inventory if we decide to expand our inventory a little bit higher, but um, that was just a kind of a quick view at what our inventory looks like. Like I said, we have about 700 items. Um, we could fit, what you saw was about 700 items. The bottom of the shelving units wasn't all listed inventory. Some of it was unlisted. So we could probably, in the area that I showed you, fit 800 or maybe 900 items, just depending. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you that real quick. And before I forget, um, let me show you screenshots of the bins that I use and the shelves that I use. I actually, the bins that I use, I used to get at Walmart. They don't sell them anymore, but I found exactly the same size, same brand, but just with cute teal handles instead. So let me show you those. And then the shelves that I use are from Costco, I believe, and they're 60 bucks on Costco, but I found them on Amazon or I don't know if they're exactly the same, but the measurements are the same and they look the same. Um, and that's 80 bucks shipped. So if you don't have a Costco membership or if you can't, don't have a truck or, or you can't get to Costco, you can order them on Amazon and get them stripped straight to you. So let me show you that right here. And the bins fit perfectly three wide on those shelves. I like measured and looked up dimensions of shelves and bins just to make sure I was using the space as wisely as possible. Um, one more thing I did want to mention is those bins are a little expensive. I think they're nine or ten bucks each so if you want a more affordable option and you can also use banker boxes they're just those cardboard boxes that you will you kind of get like reams of paper like if you get a whole box of reams of paper they come in that or they're called file boxes or bankers boxes and those are super cheap let me show you the ones that i found i think they come out to three dollars each and you could probably store 15 or so clothing items in here depending on kind of clothing you're selling um, but i'll show you a screenshot of that and that's a really great alternative if you don't want to put a lot of money into it um, to begin with or you can even just if you don't have shelves you can just stack those you can do like four or five high um, with your clothing items and do it budget so you don't have to spend all this money on shelves and bins and all these things you can do it without spending that money but I just want to show you that what we do and how we store inventory all right now that I've shown you how we physically store and organize our inventory let me show you some screenshots of how we input those numbers into eBay so that we can find those items and we know where they are um, when that item sells. And then I'll also show you kind of where we put it in Poshmark, which is just in the description, but I thought a visual might be helpful, so let me show you that right now. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you're listing on eBay. 
um, right there where it says custom label, that's where we put our inventory number. So for this example, our inventory number is P10. That means that item is in bag P10. So we would go to bin P and find the item marked P10. So that little P and that little M means that it's cross posted to Poshmark and Mercari. If I had cross posted it to Etsy, I would have put a small E. This way, when something sells on eBay, we know to go to Poshmark, Mercari, or Etsy and remove the item from those two so it doesn't sell twice. And then when you're looking in eBay at your active listings or your sold listings, you can set it up and it usually is already set up to look like this. I think the new eBay, if you sign up for a new eBay account, it might look slightly different, but it will still show your custom ID um, somewhere in there. I don't know if it'll look exactly like this, but it still makes it easy for you to see your custom ID. So you can see a list. If you're looking at your list of sold items, you can quickly go down the list and see what has sold and um, pull them out of your inventory. My husband just pulls the eBay website up on his phone, like the desktop website, and does it that way so that we don't have to print anything out or search around for inventory numbers. And this is just a really quick look at a Poshmark listing. You can see at the bottom there, I just put SH134 and that is just the item ID. I just put it at the bottom of the description. It doesn't bother anyone. I do the same thing with Etsy and I do the same thing with Mercari. So it's really easy to find the item number and go dig that item out once the item sells. All right, so that is how we store and organize all of our inventory. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions at all, or if I skipped anything or anything wasn't clear, feel free to leave a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe if you like this video and please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps kind of boost this video and help other people find this video. So thank you again so much for watching. If you have any suggestions for videos or if you wanna share how you store your inventory, I would love to hear it. I'm always looking for new ways to do things. So um, leave that down in the comments below too. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.